All right, so like a year and a half ago, I started a welding series. It wasn't like a how-to welding, but it was more of just a little bit of insight to myself. I don't consider myself like a professional welder, but I feel like maybe there's some information that some of you guys could use. I wanna get back to that. I wanna start doing that again. This particular video is not a how-to, more of a uh, food for thought, if you will. So let me kind of explain myself. You've probably heard if you're a TIG welder, if you do any kind of TIG welding, if you're just getting started in TIG welding, whatever the case may be, uh, there's a lot of talk about tungsten cleaning and how important it is. And it is very important. You need to keep your tungsten nice and clean, nice and sharp. Uh, if you happen to dip that piece of tungsten in anything, whatever it is you're working on, uh, you don't want to keep going. You can, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna bring you the best looking, the cleanest welds. You instantly want to stop what you're doing, pull that out, take it over and sharpen it in something. Now, one of the things you're gonna hear all the time is you need a dedicated wheel grinding stone, a dedicated tungsten grinder, uh, a dedicated belt sander, whatever it is that you're sharpening your tungsten with, I think it needs to be dedicated uh, just for your tungsten. And the reason for that is because you don't want foreign metals. Let me back up. The perceived reason for that is because you don't want foreign metals on whatever it is that you're sharpening your tungsten with. So you wouldn't want to, if you're grinding metal all day long on your belt sander um, or aluminum or whatever it is you're grinding over there, or your grinding wheel or whatever, you know, your stone, grinding stone, whatever it is you got. You don't want to take that and then sharpen your tungsten with it because potentially you could embed those foreign materials into your tungsten and then basically making your tungsten not as pure and clean as it needs to be to do some nice, fancy, Instagram style TIG welding. I mean, come on, let's, let's, uh, let's be truthful. That's what we're all after, right? But this is the food for thought part. So this is kind of what I've thought. I just kind of do what's uh, socially acceptable when it comes to TIG welding. But I'm also the kind of person that questions everything. I'm not a herd follower. I ask myself why a lot. So I, I see something or I'm told something, I ask myself, why though? Why do we do that? Does, does that really make sense? Um, never claimed to be very smart, didn't do very well in school. The one thing that God did gift me with was, is, is uber common sense. So that brings me to the point that I'm trying to make today, the food for thought. I'm not saying that it's bad to have a dedicated wheel or grinding stone or tungsten grinder. What I'm saying is, does it make 100% sense? Is it as critical as they make it sound? And I'm gonna tell you why. This is my point I'm trying to make here. Follow along, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So, got my tungsten and I'm over here throwing down some Instagram style TIG welds, not really. And uh, I just happened to dip that tungsten in my puddle. Say I'm working on some stainless. Beep! Make a big old mess. I got a big blob of stainless on the end of this thing. Now I need to pull this out and clean it up. I take that over to my dedicated wheel, my dedicated tungsten grinder, my dedicated belt sander, and I now am grinding off stainless, stainless steel onto whatever it is I'm working on in order to sharpen my tungsten. So now, is that, is that less dedicated now? Because now it has stainless fibers in it? 
And then, you know, a week later, I'm welding some mild steel. And as we all do, I dip my tungsten in there and I get a big blob of mild steel on there. Time to go sharpen it. I take it over to my dedicated grinding stone, my dedicated tungsten grinder, my dedicated belt sander. Now I'm grinding off the mild steel to sharpen my tungsten. Is it really a dedicated wheel? Is it really a dedicated belt sander? Do these, do these impurities that I've dipped my tungsten in just dissipate off of this stuff when I grind it? So I get the theory, I get the idea. I mean, if I'm over here grinding mild steel on this thing all the time, or all kinds of sorts of metals, I get that it could probably hinder what I'm trying to do versus just taking off just a little bit off of each piece of tungsten, but it's not dedicated. It's not pure, it's not clean. Um, unless you're taking this thing to the belt sander and cleaning off all the crap and then putting it on your tungsten grinder, which is maybe, maybe that's what we all should be doing. I don't know, but just one of those things that's kind of food for thought. Let me, you know, help me think about it a little bit. And I actually do that. If I do get a huge blob, the first place I go, is to my grinding belt, right? I take off most of the material and then I go to my dedicated tungsten grinder and clean it up, get that point nice and sharp. But does that mean I got it all? Does that mean that the thing's not got a little bit of impurities in it? No. What point am I trying to make? I don't know, really, just food for thought. Get y'all thinking out there instead of just kind of following the pack, right? can't all be sheep, man. You gotta, sometimes you gotta think for yourself. You gotta kind of get those juices flowing. You know, get to thinking about what's going on. So anyway, there is this week's not tip, but tip. I'll probably confuse the hell out of everybody, even including myself. Dedicated tungsten grinding. You gotta do it. <laughs>